Hello, my darlings. Today I'm delivering to you a Genshin Impact story featuring Venti. Venti is one of the uh, top characters, so to speak. He is very powerful and he's also very powerful in the lore of the game. But since this isn't a Bakugo story or a Kirishima story, I'm not expecting a lot of views. So this just makes it especially important for you to watch the video until the end, like or dislike it, and comment something down below. If you don't know what to comment, mm, how about you tell me your favorite Genshin Impact character? And uh, if you don't know what Genshin Impact is and you're uh, like a refugee from my other videos, hey, I greatly admire the fact that you watch more than just my Baku no, Boku no Hero stuff. Greatly appreciate that. You're the real MVP. But uh, as I already said, watch the video until the end. Like or dislike, comment something down below. Help me with the YouTube algorithm and share the video around. And if you share this video around a lot, we might even get one of the Genshin Impact v VAs to, to like react to it. Because these, the Genshin Impact VAs are almost all meme lords. I mean, have you seen them play Among Us? They play Among Us! How relatable is that? But anyways, let's get right into the show and remember to share the videos. <laughs> let's go. Storm Terror's Lair, home of the Valen. An ancient ruin that not many people in Mondstadt dare to visit. It was home to a tribe of hillichurls and wind currents invisible to the naked eye that could be dangerous to the unprepared adventurer. So why were you here? You didn't even have a vision for self-defense. It was more simple than anyone might guess. It was the tranquility around the spire that made up the center of the lair. Even the hilly churl stayed away from it, and only a single deactivated rune god stood in your way. So there really was no problem. From your point of view, it was more superstition from the townspeople that kept them in their city, but you couldn't blame them either. The storm terror incident was still fresh on everyone's mind. After an admittedly awkward ascent, you finally reached the place you desired. A lookout within the spire. Nothing had changed since your last visit here. Not even the inactive rune guard, whose circuit still gave off noise. You always wondered if the thing would actually stand up and attack you at some point. But for the time being, it was dead. You sat down between its massive legs, resting your head against its cool bronze metal. There, you stared out into the open. The sun was setting, drowning you and the world in a sorrowful orange. You needed this. Your job wasn't hard, but it involved people. Too many people. Director of Commissions. What a joke. You were paid to put numbers next to commissions, setting the minimum adventure rank for any guild-related job. It wasn't as emotionally taxing as you first thought. Sure, putting a rank 5 next to a commission about smoking out a treasure hoarder hideout might not be a wise idea, but also clear out a few slimes for me was also something that could go wrong quick. You could just put high rankings next to everything, but then the high ranks would get bored and the low ranks would not be able to advance. You didn't even want this job. Your father set it up. He was a drill instructor of the Knights of Avonius and pulled a few strings. Behind your back, of course. You would never understand why anyone would willingly do, well, any job. To you, it seemed like something you were more or less forced to, as having a job brought Mora into the pockets. 
<laughs> what are you doing here? A cheerful voice called out from somewhere behind you. And you shrieked. The voice was familiar. With a racing heart, you looked behind yourself. On top of the ruin guard's shoulders sat a friendly figure. Fenty? You spotted in surprise. You had the pleasure of meeting the bard many times after work. He spent most of his life in a bar called the Angel's Share, either getting drunk or entertaining the guests. But you had noticed something. The more often you came while he was performing, but you had noticed something the more often you came while he was performing. Venti's songs would change to something slower. Happy sonnets became heavy ballad. Happy sonnets became heavy ballads, and he always approached you afterwards. Chewing you out on how your day had been, how you were feeling, and if you have liked his song. But every conversation with him started with a cocky, <laughs> After your initial surprise, you relaxed, leaning back against the machine. What are you doing here? You said with an amused grin. You heard the noise of shoes hitting the ground next to you, followed by rustling of flowing garments. As he sat down next to you, I always come here, he said. Oh, really? You replied. Probably more often than you. You blinked, trying to process his words. So, what? Do you follow me? Or do you just expect me to be here and then go home disappointed when I'm not? Venti grinned. No, nope. well, not always. I come here to visit an old friend. You looked at the bard. His eyes were pointed upwards in the direction of the floating island Celestia. Old friend? He asked curiously. Dvalin! But he is very rarely home. Your lips perked up. Storm Terror is your friend? Is that weird? Venti asked. It's not, I think. It's just strange hearing a bard be friends with a dragon. For a moment his eyes met yours. If only you knew, he thought. You were waiting for him to make a witty comment about what you just said, but he fell quiet. Like a turtle retreating in its shell. So you returned your attention back to the surrounding area. So you returned your attention back to the horizon. Venti seemed different. Not in a bad way. When you two sat together in the angel's chair, both of you just kept on talking and talking. He gave you a certain comfortable feeling, like he could tell you everything and you could tell him everything in return. And you had found yourself thinking about him from time to time while you were working. It was as if he lived rent-free inside your head. Suddenly you looked over at him. Was he thinking of you too? It's strange, he said suddenly. Crap, did you notice you looking at him? These days I rarely get sentimental. You furred your brows. Venti not being sentimental? A few days ago, I helped the traveler with something. It was related to the great adventurer Stanley. The bard chuckled. <laughs> it made me think. Another thing I rarely do. He paused. Then you came into the angel's chair, hair all messy from pulling at it from stress. 
The moment I first saw you, I thought, I want to help this person. So was this how he saw you? As someone who needed help? You felt disappointment, but why? At first I just did what I always do, approach people, play them a tune on my lyre, and get to know them. Your heart jumped as you heard these words. But this wanting to help started feeling different. Over time, I mean... His eyes moved away from you as if he could no longer bear the sight of you. Something stronger. You know I know every person in Mondstadt. Venti blinked. Uh, through the stories I hear the drunkards spout, I mean. Phew, saved it. He sighed. And of course, I knew you, but only fleeting. Again, the drunkard stories. He smiled, but his eyes betrayed him. And, well... He paused, unable to say these words. Do you like me? You asked cautiously. The question hung around the both of you for a moment, before his mouth opened once more. Uh, yes, a lot actually. A gust of wind blew up the spire. Whew, it's getting cold, the bard said hastily. But you grabbed his arm before you could go away. No, 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 it's fine. His eyes met yours, and you pulled him closer to you, resting your head against his shoulder. You could hear his heartbeat and his shallow breathing. I like you too, you said quietly. Probably more than is good for me. There had been many occasions where both of you just kept drinking together and drinking together. You are glad your liver could handle most of it. He chuckled in a hushed tone and went quiet. In fact, you said after a moment of silence, I think I like you more than, well, just like... He was the first to take the initiative. You're saying you have a crush on me? You blushed. Maybe the reason why you had decided to come here, if your schedule allowed it, was to meet him. And he had let it slide many times that he would go here on occasion for private business matters. If he had known that it was visiting his friend to Valen. He looked at you with a soft glint in his eyes. I do. I love you. You whispered softly. And he inhaled sharply. Before closing the distance. Pressing his lips onto yours. You didn't resist. And he let himself fall backwards. Now that you were on top of him, his hands gently explored your body. For you it were pent up feelings from just a few weeks. But for him? Hundreds of years of loneliness that were finally about to end. The bard's hands reached your face. And with his thumbs he gently brushed over your cheeks. As your tongue pushed past his lips like a worm through wet soil. He groaned and hungrily pulled you closer to him. Your heartbeat exhilarated when one of his hands began sliding down your chest. 
The early morning sun woke you out of your slumber. It was pleasantly warm. Slowly you opened your eyes. You were lying on your hastily thrown of clothes, Venti's cape being a soft, all by thin blanket. Thank Barbados it was summer. You rolled on your back. Venti was sitting in his underwear on one of the ruined guard's legs, quietly playing his lyre while gazing at the early morning sun. When he noticed you were awake, he jumped off the machine. <laughs> Sleep well? You nodded and yawned. I love you, you said drowsily. He knelt down next to you, gently combing through your hair. You have a very quiet sleep, he said, smiling. You took his hand in your own and blushed. That's because you are with me. He reached over to his back that you had been using as a pillow, and from it pulled out an amulet. Here, I want you to have this. Your eyes widened. It was a vision. With shaking hands you took it from him, holding the gem in your palms. It suddenly glowed faintly, turning blue. Ah, Hydrovision! <laughs> he chuckled. I mean, you have shown to me that you can certainly blend like a river last night. You nudged his shoulder. Dork! But where did you even get this? And how? Would, would it work for me? I mean, you can't just... Get one! He winked at you with a smug smile. <laughs> I have my ways. Let's see what you can do with it later, okay? You nodded and then settled in his lap. I love you too. He whispered and you peacefully closed your eyes. It was still a little early after all.